Welcome guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to see Redux Toolkit, how you can add Redux Toolkit in your application and make your application um, better. So here I have a brand new folder. It's completely empty currently. So I'm going to just uh, drag and drop here on the um, Visual Studio. So here I'm in already inside this folder. So what I'm going to do, if I go to the browser, I have uh, Redux Quick Start Guide as well as React Application Create Guide up. So let's get started. So what I do, I copy this command and I'm going to run this command here. Now this command suggests us that it is going to create a folder name app dot my dot app dash app, but I don't want that. I want application in current folder. So I put dot there and hit enter. Now it's going to add all the files inside current directory. All right, so uh, we have the project uh, all set up. So I'm already in the fo folder, but we need to install the Redux as well as toolkit. So if I go here on the website, we need to follow the uh, install the Redux as well as toolkit. So I copy this, go back to the text editor, and there I'm going to also we need to install the Redux. So I install that. Now as everything is installed we can run npm start so that we have our development server up. Alright guys so we have the development server up so now uh, if I go to text editor here I have all the files and uh, in the source directory the more mostly uh, the two files we can be concerned with is index.js as well as the app.js. So as you know that everything is powered from app.js here so whatever we are seeing here so i don't want this learn.react button here so we can remove this and simply i can put here uh, some other text so so when i do this it should update directly all right so what we want to do uh, if i go to index.js there we are including this app which is getting rendered to the ID root so I believe you have the understanding with this so what are we gonna do we're gonna full uh, follow the uh, redux toolkit documentation so if I go there and here we have the here that uh, the we need to create a store.js file and this is the file that is going to have uh, the reducers and all the reducers we add here our application will be able to access them the reason is because when we in our index.js we will provide a uh, provider and that provider will have the access to store so the same store that we're creating here and that's why it is going to have access to all the data that we have uh, provided in our reducers right here all right so uh, by showing it in the documentation it's a bit might be a bit confusing but I'm going to show you in practical how it all works so first thing first, what do we want to do? We want to follow the documentation. Uh, in the same directory, I'm going to create the files, app and, uh, and store.js. I'm going to copy the code here. Go back to text editor. So here in source directory, I'm going to create a f uh, another folder. I'm going to call it app. And then I'm going to call the file store.js. I'm going to paste the code here and I'm going to save it so this is currently we don't have any reducer we will add one but for now just leave it empty so here if I go back here and scroll down it says that index.js you need store as well as provider so we need it so we need to call them so we go there in index.js on top here I'm gonna pass these two and then we need to wrap our app with the provider in the same way so I'm gonna copy this from here go back there and I'm gonna remove the strict mode here and this provider will end with provider so it's gonna be provider alright so we can get rid of this extra stuff here we don't need this so this is and I'm gonna save it if we go back to our application we have redact redux adder here uh, because we included it here so what we do here we simply gonna control C terminate it and then we say here npm install react dash redux while it is importing we go back to the documentation here if we could scroll down they say okay you can see 
uh, create a folder and feature counter and then counter slice dot JS. All right. So what, what what basically happening here? This example from the documentation is something they have a counter. So they have function where you when you click it increases. And you click on the different button and it will decrease. If you click on a third button or you provide some number, it will increase the amount with that particular number. So we were not gonna do the similar stuff. So what we do? We follow the process. So here. So they are advising to create a feature counter. So for now, let's do that. So here in source uh, directory, not in app, I'm gonna add source, then feature. And inside this feature, I'm gonna create this folder named counter. All right, now inside this counter, we have this counter slice.js. So we are going to create that file there. So it's simple. And I'm going to copy and paste the exact code. And I'm going to paste it here. All right. Now, if you notice here, what is happening? So basically, it is called counter. It is using the toolkit and creating a slice. And that slice basically has an object which has all these values. So it has three reducer functions so we just increment decrement and incre increment by amount and this is as reducers at the bottom we are saying that counter slice dot reducer we are exporting it and then we are saying okay this and this and this these are three functions you get from here and we are also exporting this so we can call these functions anywhere now if i scroll down here you will see that in the store they initially we did not have the any function it was empty and now here they are adding it so they're saying okay we have a counter slice so what we're gonna do we're gonna import it so they simply importing it on top as they have the counter slice available so this is a reducer so they can copy and update here so you get one reducer here. So you get the idea here that this is a counter and the type of data is coming from this file. So you might have different type of data you can call in your store and you can access through whatever name you give here. So we're gonna access it using counter. All right, so now if we go here, you see here they are creating a component and they are they are using it here they're saying it feature counter counter dot js and which is the same directory but if you want to you can create it anywhere else so what i do here i'm just going to create the same so i say here counter and it's going to be counter dot js and i'm going to paste uh, this code exactly how it is so i'm going to paste it right there now if you go here simply there is a button given and then they are displaying the count as well as they are saying uh, increment and decrement so here this is going to dispatch so if I scroll to the top we are using use selector use selector is basically getting the state and inside there it's getting counter and if you remember uh, in the store we are calling the counter so it's going to get the value of it and that count is the one we are displaying here and the functions we are getting through dispatch so we are using use dispatch which is coming from react redux and then we are seeing dispatch increment as well as decrement all right and these increment decrement these are both are here given increment as well as the decrement okay so far so good all right let's see in our app dot JS currently we don't have this encounter included so if I scroll down uh, they are doing it here so what I do is simply do that as well so in our app.js we need to call this counter so here I say uh, counter and close it now if I go on top we don't have this so we need to import it so import counter from feature and then counter and then counter all right so we now have access to it if i go back to the application and inspect console we are getting 
now as the npm start is running it is now up now we get the adder that default import as with curly braces all right so here it says count resolve counters so it is looking inside features in our case i have feature directory so what we can do we either change the directory name or we can change the code so here i change the directory name now in some places i use features so what i do i'm gonna update there as well so here all is good here it's all good here if it's features and rest all is fine all right so it's up so if i say increment here number is incrementing decrement number is decrementing so how this all is working so let's review it one more time how things are working here so if the mainly we have our app.js file where we have our main component working so you call our main parent component here now this app.js itself called inside it index.js where we are wrapping it with the provider now this provider has access to store and this store has access to all your data so if we go to the store.js we see here that okay we are saying we have a counter data which is coming from counter reducer and which is present in this file so we go to that file and that file has what we need so basically you say okay we are going to use toolkit we have an object which is initial value so you might have different value you can have different uh, structure here you can according to your application so for now we have value as zero so here we say okay we want data that is something like counter initial value is provided then we say we have some functions that and what we want to do we want to increment so here we are setting the state is plus equal one and then on decrement minus equal one now you can have logic here you can have uh, whatever you want to do here so uh, let's say in instead of plus equal we might have okay when we click on the plus equal we want to increment it with 10 each time and when it decrements we want to decrement with 5 each time so very first year and this time increment it will 10 20 30 decrement each time file decrement so you can change it accordingly if you have an API or something you want to do accordingly so you can go here you might get some data and some logic you can put and then update your state here but you for that you might have to put some different logic and uh, you need to go more deep into it now let's see how to add a post to reducer that's just going to be for the demonstration not exactly the post post so you will be able to see how things work here so I simply go in here I create another one I say here post slice.js and here I'm gonna copy everything from here just to save time and paste here now if I go on top here so we here create slice it's gonna call it the same way we are gonna call it post and we are going to call it post okay here in the value I'm gonna pause it as an empty array all right so it's empty array and what I want to do here is on when we click on increment it is going to uh, get some posts and I click on decrement it is going to uh, default it to empty array all right now what I do here I simply go to a website called JSON placeholder I for it so here we have posts if you want to get 100 posts and stuff something like that so I open this and raw data I'm not looking for 100 I'm gonna just kind of copy here five uh, when I click on increment it's going to add these posts okay now this is a second one so currently in our app we don't have uh, used this one so what I do uh, so first thing first as you want to use your posts you go to store you call here again import and call the R import so this is going to be the post slice I'm gonna call it its post reducer and I want to use it so what name you want to use I want to say post and then I call it and paste it here now I will be able to access it all right so now first thing first we're getting at her so it says count posts slice.js so let's go there 
okay uh, here we say post slice so when we are exporting it make sure you're uh, saying it post slice so here post slice dot actions so it will work now so if I go here this time in increment uh, all right it's uh, it will work the same way because it's going to the uh, if you notice here so if you go to the uh, counter where we have the buttons it is calling the increment right and then this increment is telling us that this increment is getting from counter now we want to say okay it is not counter it is post and uh, error will go but still nothing will happen because uh, we are not accessing the value we're showing the value here just like this and we are getting the value from a uh, use selector and use selector is going for state counter and value v if we go back to the store this time we are saying it's post so we go back here to pass this post into our counter so here we say counter instead of counter get the post value all right now we go back here and here get the objects are not valid react child okay so because it has a lot of data so all right now the states is going to have the data like this but we can't just call the state uh, this way now so you can see here the we are saying count so it's it's a post so if I click here it's it says okay it's object how you want to show it so what we need to do we need to just like loop through so first thing first I'm gonna change it to posts then I'm gonna say posts and then I'm gonna say here posts dot length just to short just to demonstrate like for a, just a point for now refresh increment you get the five post increment uh, decrement it's zero increment five post now if you want to show the post itself you can loop through and send then you can simply end posts dot map and then you whatever you want to do you can do so you get the point the main point is how the redux toolkit and gives you the power to work with it so here simply I say return uh, item dot title for now so now you can see that we have the uh, so decrement it goes away increment it comes away so it comes here I'm going to elaborate it more I want to create an API so that we can create a bit more use out of it it's just the understanding how you can use toolkit in your application just some basic here so hope you like it if you like it uh, share the video thank you for watching see you in the next one